I had just left my mother's house after visiting her on her birthday. She lives a state over from me, and while I don't visit as often as I should, I try to make it out there when I do get a chance. The drive to my mother's house was fine. Actually, I made pretty good time. Normally a six hour trip ended up taking me only five hours and that was a plus. I never really cared much for driving. Sure, some people would argue that driving can be cathartic, driving peacefully on an open road. For me, however, I just find driving, especially long distances, to be monotonous. The less time I have to spend on the road, the better. I had left my mother's a little after 4 p.m., and for the first hour or so, I was met with an outrageous amount of congestion. I think I ended up sitting on the highway without moving for a total of 20 minutes straight. Then, immediately after, I was met with intermittent stops which turned my monotonous trip into one of agony. The constant drive two feet then break was beginning to take a toll on my mind. After about an hour and a half, my GPS came to life informing me of a severe accident further down the road. Although I wasn't surprised, I was grateful to have something to blame on this bad traffic. As my car crept further down the road, my GPS with her overly chipper voice suggested that I take a detour. At that point, anything was better than sitting in this metaphorical hell. The exit was slowly approaching, and just trying to get to that ramp was torturous. Like having your favorite food placed just out of your reach. Eventually, I made it, and followed a few other cars making a quick exit as well. My GPS began to plot a new route home as I drove along the side road. Around 10 minutes later, I found myself driving alongside farmland for as far as the eye could see. While I was still a little frustrated at sitting in traffic, being able to drive consistently with a relaxing view did help calm me down a bit. It wasn't long after passing the third cornfield that I noticed that I was now alone on the road. I knew I had been following some cars when I pulled off the highway, but now there were no vehicles in front of or behind me. Even though that was odd, I put it out of my mind as I drove along. A few minutes later, my gas light appeared, and I sighed as this just seemed to add on to my many driving frustrations. I was pulling up to an intersection when I saw a sign for a town to my right. Running out of options, I made my way down the road. When I first pulled into town, I was surprised at how barren it was. There was a small gas station on the edge of town, a post office nearby and a few residential houses further down the road. Putting the thought to the back of my mind once again, I pulled into the gas station as the sun was beginning to set. After getting out of my car, I saw that the pump had a please pay inside sign taped to it. So with a huff, I walked over to the gas station itself. When I stepped through the doors, I locked eyes with the man behind the counter. He was an older gentleman with a white beard and a deep blue shirt. I gave him a nod as I walked over to the coolers to grab a water. He didn't return a nod, nor did he make any movements whatsoever. It was late, I thought, probably the end of his shift. I walked up to the counter and set my water down and asked him to put 20 on the pump outside. He just stared at me for a moment with a grin that seemed forced. After a full minute of silence, I asked him if he was all right. He simply nodded, pressed a few buttons on the register, then returned to his previously motionless demeanor. I asked him how much it was for the water, but the man didn't acknowledge me at all. Feeling too tired to deal with all of this, I just set a 20 and a few ones on the counter and headed out to my car. As I was filling up my car, I noticed something even stranger than the gas station clerk. There was a woman standing in the middle of the street. I watched her until my tank was topped off, wondering what the hell she was doing. After I finished, I walked out into the street, taking care to check for oncoming cars. As I approached her, I asked her if she was doing all right. She had the same odd grin as the clerk. I gently placed a hand on her shoulder, and she turned to me. I asked her if she knew that she was standing in the street. To which she replied, 
Oh, yes. We are happy here. She turned back away from me and continued staring down the road. At this point, I was ready to leave, and not just because my gas tank was full. I got in my car and carefully drove around the woman as she remained motionless. As I drove through the town, more and more things stuck out at me. The post office nearby had four people standing outside of its doors. Though I have a friend who works at the post office and they don't stay open very late at all. So either this was a unique post office or those people were waiting to get inside a closed building. I began to pass by the houses next. One house had a man raking his front lawn. Normal enough, although there wasn't a single leaf anywhere to be found. Across the street from him was a house that had a small seesaw in the front yard with two children playing on it. Except, they were both sitting on it evenly, staring at each other, not going up and down. I started to pick up my pace as I wanted more and more to get out of this strange town, but I soon regretted that decision as flashing lights filled my rearview mirror. I groaned as I pulled over to the side of the street. I watched through my mirror as the police officer stepped outside of his vehicle with a large grin plastered across his face. He slowly walked up to my window and stood there. I had been pulled over before and one thing I learned is you wait for instructions from the officer. After a few minutes came and went, I rolled down the window and asked if there was a problem. With a relatively happy tone, the officer said, You have the right to remain silent. I gave him a confused look and asked if I was under arrest, to which he spoke again. It's illegal to drive a car, sir. If I wasn't already so creeped out by the whole town, I would have thought this was actually quite funny. I told him that I had a license and registration to drive this car. He then leaned down and almost stuck his head inside my car window before saying, Have a nice day. He then stood back up, walked back to his car, and then drove away with his lights still flashing. I was at a loss for words. Never in my life had I experienced anything like that before. Taking a moment to compose myself, I looked around and noticed that all the people were now staring at me. The man raking his leafless yard. The two children. Everyone was staring at my car now. I started to drive away when I was stopped by a sight that made me feel very uneasy. The woman from before. The one that was standing in the middle of the street near the gas station. Well, she was still in the street, but right in front of me now. I had been driving for quite a few minutes, so unless she was a marathon sprinter, there was no way she could have gotten in front of me. I slowly crept closer to her, and like before, carefully maneuvered my car around her. I still had my window down as I passed by slowly. When I was almost halfway, she turned to me. Her eyes were a dark shade of red, and she was no longer smiling. In a deep, gravelly voice that obviously didn't belong to her, she said, Join us. I have never stomped my foot on the gas pedal that hard before in my life. My tires squealed down the road, and I didn't let off until I started to see the cornfields once again. After another half hour of driving, I found a road leading back to the highway. Once I was back on the highway, a tidal wave of relief washed over me. I didn't get off the highway until I was finally home. When I made it home, I couldn't stop thinking about all those weird people. How they all looked like people, but they didn't act like people. I know this must sound confusing to all of you, but it's just as confusing to me. After I made it home, I took some time to retrace the route I took on the map, and saw that there was no town in that area. I'm not entirely sure who they are, or even what they are, but I think next year, 
I'll just send my mom a card for her birthday. Instead, 